Hi, my name is Josh Mahoney, Chief Market Analyst at Scope Markets. I wanted to talk to you today about what's happening in terms of the US CPI release coming out on Tuesday and the US Federal Reserve meeting, which is going to be a particularly, particularly interesting one because it also comes alongside economic projections, the dot plot and alike. Certainly from the perspective of the outlook from the Federal Reserve, this shift in terms of the dot plot is going to be really interesting because since they last enacted a dot plot, and we're going to show you it here, since we last saw a dot plot, we have seen significant movements in terms of market expectations. And that's partly what has driven price action over the past month. November saw equity markets do particularly well. We've seen that come off a little bit in December because November was all about more rate, hike, rate cuts next year and bringing them forward. So the expectation was 125 basis points worth of cuts in 2024, starting in March. Friday saw the US jobs report, and that started to see expectations reined in somewhat as we saw better than expected payrolls figure. We saw a significant 0.2% decline in the unemployment rate, and therefore people started to quell those uh, expectations somewhat. Why this dot plot is particularly interesting is that we currently have a massive disconnect between what the markets are thinking and what the Federal Reserve have shown us the last time around with the dot plot. In terms of the dot plot, it expected us to see one more rate hike than we saw. That didn't necessarily come to fruition. But the three clusters that we've seen in terms of expectations of where rates would be by the end of 2024 point towards either where we are at the moment, 25 basis points lower or 50 basis points lower. So, you know, that means that the, the top end of the spectrum we're looking at sort of 50 to 75. Well, markets are now pricing 100 to 125 basis points worth of cuts. So do we see that adjustment come in terms of the Federal Reserve and they shift their dot plot dramatically and that suddenly emboldens the markets to think that they're right? Or do we see the markets have to rein themselves and we see adjustment in terms of market expectations? That's what I think is going to be particularly interesting. This is the latest uh, FedWatch uh outlook in terms of the expectations for the federal reserve meeting in march that was expected to be the first rate cut we're now seeing a 57 percent chance or 58 when you had uh, the one percent hike chance so 58 percent chance that we're either at this current level or higher by march so in actual fact it's now an outlier the view that we're going to see a rate cut that is a big shift because it Prior to Friday's jobs report, we did see an expectation that we were going to see the first rate cut in March. In terms of the wider outlook for 2024, what we can see here is the sort of lightest bar of the lot is where we were a month ago. So a month ago, we were looking at the most likely outcome for 2024 is that we see, say, two to three uh, rate cuts. This time around, we've now shifted it out. It's more towards 100 basis points worth of rate cuts rather than 50 to 75. And then the 125, which was the expectation coming into that job support, that has shifted lower somewhat since. So the view now is that we're going to see around about 100 basis points worth of cuts starting in May, no longer in March. And so the shift around these expectations has already happened somewhat. I wrote a preview to the uh, inflation report on Friday, and that was prior to the jobs report. And of course, now we've really seen this shifting uh, quite significantly since. But my view was that there was a good chance that we were going to see some movements in terms of expectations. Talking of expectations, markets from the inflation perspective are going to be looking for a tick lower in terms of the headline number and a flatlining core number. And certainly this does highlight the fact that when we drill down into these numbers, we're seeing very different trajectories. The trajectory in terms of the headline number has been much more volatile. We've, of course, seen it pick up somewhat over earlier months. Then once you know that July, August pickup has happened, we're now starting to drift lower once again. The core number we've been seeing very gradual, uh, but certainly we haven't necessarily seen the steep declines that we've seen in terms of the headline number. In terms of what we're stripping out this time around, so looking at base effects, we're stripping out a 0.2 figure from November last time around. The market expectations, as we've seen here, is for a 0.1 reading up from 0% last time. Um, so 
you know, that's marginally below the 0.2%. So that's why we're expecting to see a tick lower in terms of the year on year figure. I think there's a good chance we actually see more than that. And, and we'll get onto that within this chart here. So US gasoline prices, we have seen coming off as we see energy prices continue to decline. Now, that continued downside in terms of gasoline and fuel prices over in the US points towards a potentially lower figure in terms of the month on month reading compared to last time around. If you look at this correlation that we've got here on this chart, last time around, it was flat at 0% on a monthly basis. And therefore, whilst markets are expecting a monthly figure of 0.1%, I think there's a good chance that we see 0% or below that. Bear in mind, the Eurozone number came in at minus 0.5. Don't necessarily think it's going to be as dramatic as that. But certainly if we do see a figure of 0% or minus 0.1, then that does the job of driving down the annual figure to a greater extent. And therefore, that would embolden markets in terms of this idea that actually, you know, we're moving towards target in a more uh, hasty or dramatic fashion than, than we had previously expected. Maybe we're wrong. Maybe we are going to see more rate cuts next year. Maybe we are going to see 125. Maybe we will see it happen in March. Bear in mind, a lot of this is going to get clarified 24 hours later with the Federal Reserve meeting when we see commentary from Powell. In terms of the core numbers, I've put both the core PCE and the core CPI. Bear in mind, the PCE is the number that the Federal Reserve uh, prefer. But nonetheless, the CPI is the number that we're going to see on Tuesday. The, the figure that we're seeing stripped out is 0 0.3. The last time around, we saw a figure of 0 0.227. So there is a good chance that if we sort of carry on the sort of trajectory that we've seen over the past five months, that we will be marginally below that November figure and we could potentially tick lower. It's 4%. Market expectations are for another 4% reading. I think there's a good chance we see a 3.9% number. But, you know, I don't think there's not too much between it. So 3.9, 4%, ultimately it points towards exactly what's happening, which is a very slow grind lower. And if you look at where the big chunky figures are that need to drop out for us to get back down to that 2% target, well, we need to get to May uh, before we see that happen. Um, so I think there's a good chance that by March time, we're not necessarily going to be back at target when it comes to the likes of the core figures more likely to be the headline numbers. So from the perspective of what we're looking out for from the Federal Reserve meeting, I'd like to know whether they want to see that core figure down to target or whether they're just happy seeing headline inflation back down to target before they start to ease. But certainly the view from core is a little bit less interesting because I think it's just going to be at 4% or maybe 3.9. The view from the headline number is going to be a lot more interesting because we see that 0 0.2 stripped out but while markets are expecting a 0 0.1 and therefore we could see a tick lower in terms of the year on year figure, I think that that gasoline price decline and the energy price decline should uh, help drive down that November monthly CPI reading uh, to potentially help risk attitudes. Talking of which, if we were to look at equity markets, this is the S&P 500. We're coming into trade uh, on Monday with a rally up into this prior resistance level that we have here, it's just here, 46.07. And essentially, we're easing back as things stand, seeing a bit of risk off sentiment. The ability to break through that level is going to be really key. So if we see inflation coming in low, which I do think there is a chance of it with the decline in energy prices, then we could see that break through 46.07 and continue this latest leg higher. Bear in mind, if we look at, say, the four hour chart, we can see this uh, these constant swings we're now pushing on from there so if we were to see a pullback from here i think there's a good chance that that pullback would just come into this area before we then start to head higher once again um but if we were to break through resistance here then perhaps that pullback might come into this resistance level and turn it into support before we push higher essentially 45 43 needs to break to negate this bullish trend that's been dominating the last month and a bit until that happens look out for this inflation reading if it comes in low i think it should give a boost to markets and keep an eye out for that cme fed watch tool it's free uh, you can probably find it in google if you just uh, type in cme fed watch that will tell you how we're seeing adjustments in terms of market expectations for the federal reserve going forward and certainly that meeting with the expectations in terms of the jobs probably going to look good in terms of the you know unemployment's going to remain 
low if you look at the numbers on Friday. But how do they see inflation going forward? How do they see things from the dot plot perspective? And in terms of market expectations, they're going to adjust accordingly. In terms of the inflation number, that's going to be the first mover and the Fed will feed off the back of that. And I think there's a good chance that we see that headline number move towards the downside to potentially give us a bit of a risk on boost coming into that Federal Reserve meeting.